All right, so our final topic is supply and demand curves. And um, you know, this is a concept from economics. And you notice that it has the word curves here. Um, so su supply and demand curves are often curves, meaning they're not linear, right? <laughs> they're not linear, they're curves. But oftentimes we can use a linear function to, um, to either approximate the demand curve or supply curve, or maybe it is close enough to linear that we can, we, uh, uh, modeling a demand curve or a supply curve with a line is, is just fine. So we're gonna look at just linear supply and demand curves, which sounds a little contradictory, right? <laughs> but they're linear. They're essentially the supply and demand lines, okay? All right, so what's a demand equation? A demand, a demand equation is just a, uh, it re expresses the relationship between the unit price and the quantity demanded. All right, so um, as you might expect, if the price goes down, then there might be more demand for a product. But it, if the price goes up, then there are few, few, fewer people who can afford it, so the demand might go down. So in general, the quantity demanded of a, uh, of a commodity it, um, decreases, decreases as its selling price increases. Or we could state we could um, state it the other way around. It increases as the as the price decreases. Okay, so either one of those would be acceptable ways to fill in those blanks. All right, so let's take a look at example three. So here we're uh, manufacturing Sentinel iPod alarm clocks, <laughs> um, and it's it's telling us that the quantity demanded is forty eight thousand units when the price is at eight dollars okay and the um, when the price is twelve dollars the quantity demanded the drops to thirty two hundred units okay so um, first first thing we're asked to do is find the demand equation assuming that it's linear um, and uh, what is the price corresponding to a quantity demanded of 40,000 units. Okay, so there's a couple questions in one there. Now, one thing to note about this um, is the orientation of these axes in the demand curve. So um, X is the quantity demanded. So this is the quantity, quantity demanded. And this is the price. Now, to me, this seems a little backwards because most of the time, <laughs> at least in science, um, you want the um, independent uh, variable on the x-axis and the dependent variable on the y-axis, right? And in this case, um, the demand is dependent on the price. So this seems backwards to me, but just we'll just have to live with it. <laughs> <laughs> These economics people don't uh, don't do things right apparently. <laughs> so uh, so just be aware that the, this this x value is the quantity demanded, and p, which makes sense for price, is the um, you know is the, is the y axis. Okay, and you can see too. I should have noted here before. Um, you can see the negative slope, right? You can see that the, you can see that as um, the demand for a quantity increases, um, the, uh, sorry, the demand for a quantity increases as the price goes down, right? And vice versa, as the um, price goes up, the quantity demanded decreases, right? All right, so we have a negative slope. So you should, we should expect a negative slope when we write our equation here. So it's good to have that in mind so that we, you know, can check ourselves as we go along. All right, so we're going to, first of all, define our um, x variable. So we're going to say, let's let x be the quantity bit demanded, be the quantity, quantity, oops, there's a t in there, quantity demanded demanded 
And um, it'll be a little easier to work with. Um, these are kind of big numbers for the units. So let's define this um, in thousands. Okay, thousands. Okay, so we're going to define the quantity demanded in thousands. So in thousands, this quantity demanded is 48, 48,000 units. This would be a 32, right? And then we don't have to, we can just work with small, it's a little, sometimes a little easier to work with smaller numbers. Okay, so we're essentially given two points, right? We're given that when, um, when x is equal to, um, uh, when the, the, so the x is the number of units. So when the price is $8, which is our y coordinate, <laughs> the demand is 48,000. Okay, so that first uh, point is this. So this is our x value in thousands, and this is our p value. All right, and then the other point that we're given is at um, when the price is uh, $12 per unit. So again, that's our p-value. I'm going to put that second because we've got that on the, the vertical axis. And so then the demand drops to 32,000. So I'm just going to say that's 32. We're just going to keep in mind that it's in thousands. All right, so we have two points. So to write the equation for a line, we need the slope. And then we're just going to take one of those points and, and uh, figure out the equation for the line. So the slope... It's just going to be the difference in y, so 12 minus 8. So in this case, y is p, right? So this is, I could call this p1 and p2, this x1 and this x2. Okay, so, but uh, the vertical axis is p. So the slope is going to be the difference in the prices over the difference in uh, the quantities. Right, so I, I took P2 first, so I have to take X2 first, so it's 32 minus 48. So I get a slope of 4 over negative 16, which is the same as negative 1 fourth. Okay, so there's my slope. And now I'm just going to use the point slope form of a line, right? So I just have to keep in mind that my Y value is P, so I'm going to have P minus and I could just use the second point just because it's right here. And the numbers are smaller, so I'll just use that one. So P minus 12. So I'll use 32 comma 12 as my fixed point. And then the slope is minus 1 fourth. And then I have X minus, um, minus 32 because that's my the X value of my fixed point. Okay. So now I need to write a function in terms of P. So I'm just going to add 12 to both sides. If I add 12 here add 12 here, and then I can just clean it up a little bit. So then I get P is equal to, I'm also going to distribute the negative 1 fourth. Okay, so I get negative 1 fourth X, whoops, X, and then negative 1 fourth times negative 32 becomes a positive 8. And then I have this plus 12. So my equation, my final equation, is p is equal to minus 1 fourth x plus 20. All right, so that's a, um, a, our demand curve. That gives us the, the price for a given demand. <laughs> or we can give it a price and then we can figure out the demand uh, either way. Okay, so that's my equation. The next question is just saying, it's just asking what's the unit price corresponding to 40,000 units? Okay, well, I guess I kind of repeated that up here. So the price cor corresponding to 40,000 units sold would be, um, I'm just going to put, this is my x value. I'm just going to say this is equal to x. So the price is equal to negative 1 fourth times the 40,000. And then add, oops. This should have been 20, right? There we go, 20, because 8 plus 12 is 20. <laughs> All right, so plus 20. So 1 fourth, okay, now I have to be careful, right? I just did something stupid, right? I, got, <laughs> I defined my, my quantity x to be in thousands. All right, so, okay, you, learn from, you can learn from my mistakes. I have to express my x value in thousands. So I really have to, I really have to take away um, this 40,000 or this thousand part.
So it's just going to be 40. Now, for some reason, it won't let me change my pen. I don't know why, because I can't erase it, apparently. All right, I'll just leave it. So I'm going to have to cross out the 1,000 because it's 40,000. So it's just going to be 40 because my x value is, def is defined to be in thousands. All right, so what do I get when I, when I do that? I take negative 1 fourth of 40, I get minus 10. Subtract that from, or take minus 10 plus 20, right? It gives me a positive 10. So the price is $10. So when the price is $10, I should expect a demand of about 40,000 units. All right, one more question here. What is the quantity demanded when the price is $14? Okay, this seems like a reasonable question. But now um, $14 is my price. So I'm going to substitute that in for the P value. So 14 is equal to minus 1 fourth X plus 20. All right, I'm just taking the equation that I found and substituting a price of $14. Now I just have to do a little algebra. So I'm probably going to subtract 20 from both sides first. That will essentially move the 20 to the other side. So what do I get? Um, it's going to be a negative 6 is equal to minus 1 fourth x. And then if I multiply both sides by a negative 4, then negative 4 times negative 1 fourth becomes 1. And then I get x by itself. So I'm multiplying both sides by negative 4, and I get x is equal to 24. But again, we have to remember that that um, this 24 is in thousands, right? So this is in thousands. So that means 24,000 units. So my actual answer is 24,000 units, right? Okay. Well, that takes care of example three, and we got one more example on um, supply equations, and then we're done.